Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today we're gonna learn a very simple method to extract details from the sky and we're gonna be using channels to do the same. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo, check the links in the description. So before we move on to starting with this, let me show you the final results. So this is something which I already created and let me show you how this is done so that you have an idea of how this tutorial will go. All right. So this is the before and then we used channels to add details to the sky. And after that, we saw that the sky was a little too saturated and the image was not styli sty stylized enough. So we added a color lookup table. All right. And then we decreased the saturation of the sky just like so all right very simple to do so that's going to be the plan for the tutorial so let's start from scratch let's come back to this image the first thing that we have to do is to go to the channels tab all right now we need to select a channel which has the most details in the sky so right in here we will try the red green and blue probably the red channel has the most details and brings out the clouds why because red is the opposite of blue. Now, if you want to know more about channels and how they work, check out this video right here. All right. So we need to create a mask, keeping this as a basis. How can we do that? Hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail of the red channel. And by the way, just so you know, you can increase the size of the thumbnail by right clicking here and selecting probably medium or large, whatever you like. I'm going to select medium. Okay, so this makes things much easier to see. Let's come back to layers and make sure you click on RGB to bring back everything. Okay, now we need to create a curves adjustment layer, keeping this as a mask, keeping the red channel as a mask. How can we do that? Once you have an active selection, right? All you have to do is to create a curves adjustment layer. Whoops. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Okay, now as you can see, the same mask that we had in the red channel appears right over here. If we brighten it up, what's being brightened? The cloud. Why? Because the clouds were white in the mask and the blue sky was dark. So anything which is white is targeted. Anything which is black is not selected or hidden or not targeted. Okay. So if we increase the value, you are brightening the clouds. Okay. Which is pretty good. All right. Now we need to darken the sky. So all we need to do, make a copy of this curves adjustment layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. Okay. Now you need to take it in the opposite direction. But again, we are targeting the clouds. We need to target the sky. Now what is the sky? Sky are the areas which are not clouds, right? So we need to invert the mask. Make sure you select the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I. Okay. Now you need to darken the sky. Don't darken too much. Otherwise, you'll see these inconsistencies over there. Okay, so do it moderately. This is fine. And I'm not being moderate because I want you to see the effect. But when you're doing it, please be a little moderate. Okay. All right. Now this looks pretty good, but at the top, you know, these areas are not looking nice and uh, it's not necessary. So we're going to simply crop it. So press C. If you're moderate enough, it's it will not appear. If your image is of very high quality, it won't appear. Don't worry about that, but I'm going to crop it. Press C to open up the crop tool and then probably I'll choose a ratio of 16 as to 9 and I'll just crop it like that. If you want to increase it, clear the ratio and you can increase it just like so. But I'm happy with this. Hit enter once you're satisfied with the crop. Now, here's the deal. If I give this effect by using the curves adjustment layer, it's also affecting the models right in there. And we don't want that to happen. So here's what we do. We make a group of both of them by holding the control or command, select the other one, make sure both of them are selected and then press control or command G. Now we have a group. Let's create a mask of the group. Click on the mask button. Now, simply you can take the brush. Simple, right? Increase the size just a little bit by holding the Alt, the right mouse button. Okay. Drag it to the right to increase the size. Drag it to the left to decrease the size. Drag it up to soften it. Drag it down to darken it. If you're using a Mac, that would be Option, Control, Mouse button. And then drag. Okay. Now, we need to paint in black over the models because black hides, white shows up. So let's zoom in and simply, you don't have to be super careful about this thing. Just paint like so. And we're done. 
I think the smoothing is 65. We don't need smoothing here. Okay. Pretty good. All right, let's zoom out. Let's paint over the grass. Okay, I think we painted a little extra over there. So in case you paint a little extra just like this, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and paint with white in those areas. Again, white shows up, black hides. All right, that is pretty much done. Now you can also use, if you wanna be super accurate about this, you can also use the color range to create a better selection. So what you can do, have a look at the mask. So if I hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask, this is a very simple mask that we did with the brush. However, let's delete it and let's redo this with color range, okay? This is fine, color range is fine. Any method that works for you, please go for it. Let's first of all go to Select and then Color Range. Okay, now inside of color range, now you might as well want to turn this group off because that might distract stuff. Let's close that and turn this group off, come back to this one and then go to select and color range. That way you have a much flatter, flat sky. All right, now selection preview, change that to none for now and let's select this color. Make sure you have the eyedropper tool selected. Now once you have that selected, click on this area. Now we have the sky selected. Now you can change the selection preview to grayscale. So white are the areas which are selected, black are the areas which are not selected. So we need to make sure the complete sky is white and they are completely black. So click on the plus eyedropper tool and start clicking on areas around them. Okay, now increase the fuzziness accordingly. A little bit of them selected is fine. Okay, that is fine, hit okay. Okay, now we have the selection. Come to the group, turn on the group. With the selection active, click on the mask button. Okay, now as you can see, you have the same mask. However, we need to work on it. Take the brush and just paint in white over the sky. Left out areas, okay, like that. And you can like darken them. See the grass is how nicely it is selected, right? So you can select the color black and you can just darken her and you get the idea, right? You can also choose the blend mode, by the way, overlay. That way when you darken them, see, it just won't paint in the white area. So it really helps. See how nicely it works? Similarly, if you choose white, it won't paint in the super dark areas. Okay, I think I reversed it. When you choose white, when you choose black, it won't paint in the white areas. And when you choose white, it won't paint in the dark areas. Super dark areas. All right, hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask. And we have a perfect mask right in there just by using color range. Now, as you can see, the sky is a little too saturated, but before that, we will apply a style, probably stylize it. To stylize it, you can add any adjustment layer of your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a simple color lookup table right over there. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose color lookup. Now you can choose anything, you can just click on any one of them and use the scroll of your mouse to like scroll through all of them. All right, so just click on it, okay? 3D LUT file and scroll, see which one looks good to you. For me, I think I will choose late sunset that is fine but i think it's too much let's try it with different blend modes let's try soft light with this how does that look that is interesting now let's decrease the opacity let's try multiply with this let's go with multiply i think i need to decrease the opacity a little bit probably i'll go with 35 that is fine now let's decrease the saturation of the sky because i think it's too much Let's click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Now we need to decrease the blues, all right? So we will choose the blues right in here and decrease the saturation just like that. And it looks so much better. Now you can work on add some more curves, maybe add a little bit of gradient maps and work with it and totally get the most details out of it. But this is it, very easy to do. Here's the before, 
here's the after right so that's how you add details to this guy extract details that this guy already has so just as a quick little recap first of all all you need to do you need to go to the channels tab inside of the channels tab choose the channel which has the most details in the sky in this case we had the red channel showing the most detail right so we made a selection based on the red channel by holding the control or command clicking on the red channel this made a selection out of it then we came back to layers and then we created curves adjustment layers with those selection in one we brightened the clouds and in the other we darkened the sky easy using the same mask and remember to invert the mask in the second one all right once you did that we saw the effect was also being applied on the subjects just like so so we created a mask now there are tons of ways to create a mask we learned how to do that with a simple brush and we also learned how to do that by using color range all right so after we did the mask we applied a color lookup table very simple one with blend mode and then decreased the saturation of the sky and that's pretty much it i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating